Would you like to know more about the PhD in cyber operations from Dakota State University? I've actually gone through the program and in today's episode, I'll be exploring at length everything you need to know about the faculty, the curriculum, the school, and the program itself, coming up. Hey everybody, thanks for joining. Today we'll be talking about the Dakota State University PhD in Cyber Operations. My name is Jerry Ozier and this is Simply Cyber, a channel dedicated to helping information security people take their career further faster. In 2014-2015, Dakota State University got their accreditation and all their paperwork in order and were able to start offering a PhD in Cyber Operations. Now today's episode we're going to talk about the school itself, the faculty, the curriculum of the program, what the content delivery of that curriculum looks like, the engagement from student to faculty and student to student, kind of in a peer level, what the costs are, not just financial, and my recommendations for you going forward. So let's dig in. First off, the school. Dakota State University is located in Madison, South Dakota. It's a very, very small uh, like prairie-ish town. It's not a big city. Uh, and the university, I believe, only has uh, around 3,000 students. And that includes undergraduate, graduate, and, um, you know, graduate doctoral students. Now, the school, as far as the cyber operations go, th that piece, the cybersecurity piece, falls under the Beacom Institute of Technology. This is a brand new facility, state-of-the-art. They've got all sorts of great tech and investments financially. Uh, and just community-based pumping in to this school. Uh, and, and in the result, the cyber operations program really gets to benefit. Now, one thing that I would like to tell you is just recently, I believe in the last six to 12 months, Dakota State University actually opened the Madison Labs, AKA Mad Labs. This is an $18 million, 40,000 square foot facility that is full of very different labs with very different specific cybersecurity purposes. There's a large hook into corporate businesses, like large ones like Lockheed, and Northrop Grumman, and these type of things. Also um, local businesses in, uh, within the Madison and South Dakota area. Now some of those labs include the ADAPT lab, which helps people with disabilities learn to live barrier free. They have the Cyber Education and Professional Development Lab, which helps develop education for K through 12. A Cyber Her Security Institute, which is really uh, intended to provide resources for girls from middle school through college uh, around cyber technologies. Also, they have the Deep Red Lab, as you can imagine, that's around finding security flaws. The Defend Lab, which is kind of the you know other side of the coin from the Red Lab. There's a Digital Forensics Labs. There's the Patriot Lab, which is really focused around IoT devices. Smart Home Lab, which is, as you can imagine, uh, smart home and energy management research. So there is a widespread, diverse capability being offered within these labs. You can see the investment that the university is making in supporting cyber security related type of activities and education. So having said that, let's move on to the faculty specific to the PhD program. The faculty is incredible. I constantly joke when people ask me about this because Madison is such a small town, yet they have really, really incredible, impressive faculty within the cyber operations program. Dr. Kyle Cronin, Dr. Michael Hamm, Dr. Josh Strohshine, Dr. Bramwell um, Brizendine, um, the list goes on. These are not just, you know, really intelligent faculty members, but they're actively involved in the community, presenting at major conferences like DEF CON and Black Hat, going into the uh, community and doing service. Um, it's just really awesome to see that these aren't just kind of paper tigers, but really practitioners within the space that you're going to be learning from. Let's talk about the curriculum for a second. Now, if you are familiar with my PhD in general video uh, linked right here, I kind of dove into what you can expect a normal curriculum to be shaped like with the core classes, research classes, uh, and dissertation piece. Well, specific to the DSU PhD, in cyber operations. Your core classes are 800 level classes and they're very focused on offensive techniques. There's malware analysis, well, advanced malware analysis, advanced software exploitation, advanced reverse engineering. And then there's two classes that you're required to take that I didn't have to take because the, they didn't exist when I went through the program. I took two other classes um, around secure tool development and another one. but. 
The two that uh, you additionally have to take, I'm not familiar with, so I can't speak to those, but I'm sure they're quality. Now, the software exploitation, malware analysis, and reverse engineering, it's what you would think. With reverse engineering, you tear something apart, find you know vulnerabilities or zero days, work with the vendor to um, you know make them aware, publish it, get a CVE if you wanna do that. So you're actually doing real hands-on, real security research work while going through it. It's not just a class with an academic exercise that you kind of work through. The malware analysis class is fantastic. When I went through it, Angular Exploit uh, was pretty big at the time. So we went and took Angular, tore it apart, looked at it exactly uh, at the uh, assembly, not assembly level, at the disassembled level, um, and took a look at how it worked, what it was doing, what the C2 infrastructure looked like, broke it out piece by piece, and really um, understood not just you know, what Angler was doing, but the technique to analyze malware. And, you know, if you wanted to develop indicators of compromise afterwards and do and make rules and such, you could do that. Uh, but really an interesting uh, event. And then there was the advanced software exploitation, 848. If you're familiar with the program or if you've gone through it, 848 is really a, a, a bear. It's, a, it's a in, incredibly demanding, incredibly difficult uh, course. And you basically are looking at, you know, disassembled code and finding zero day bugs in it. Or, you know, it, it, for academic purposes, maybe we already know where they are and you're, you're basically being led to it, but you're looking at uh, ROP gadgets. You're looking at, you know, buffer overflow for the first, you know, lab, just to kind of take it back to the roots. Uh, ROP gadgets, JOP, um, these type of new kind of cutting edge techniques for software exploitation. Obviously you look at the defensive pieces. It's kind of a cat and mouse game with, um, 848 where it's like, okay, here's a buffer overflow and in return ASLR and depth were created and then in re response to that ROP was done and then response to that, you know, so it, it's really, it's really cool. Uh, it's really cool, but it's incredibly hard. We're talking labs that take 20 to 30 hours um, to, to complete uh, and they're due weekly. So it's very demanding, uh, but be aware of that. Now the research courses that they offer at Dakota State University, you have to take three. They kind of build upon each other. And if you already know what you wanna do for your dissertation, you actually can kind of focus those three research courses um, to focus and zero in on what you're gonna be doing for your dissertation and then ultimately apply the artifacts that you're developing in those three courses towards your dissertation to kind of get you a head start. So that's pretty cool. But what I will say is the research courses are fantastic and they literally will teach you a professional slash life skill on how to do research effectively and quickly uh, for good results. Really quick, if you're enjoying it, hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe, I really appreciate it. Now, engagement for student and faculty and student and student. Um, it is a distance uh, remote learning class, so there is that kind of uh, unknown on are you gonna feel isolated or are you gonna feel a connection now in my experience and I've seen this now uh, with many many students there's an active slack channel among the students that some of the faculty will get into uh, at the PhD level you're really you know you are learning from the faculty but you are seen as peers effectively uh, along with the other students in the cohort everybody who gets accepted the program is very very intelligent and very very professional so you have a really excellent professional network and social dynamic that's going on there. For faculty student, I found that faculty was incredibly responsive, uh, timely if you had an issue. Now again, at the undergrad, at the PhD level, you're not waiting until 1030 at night, the night before the assignment is due to ask a question like, hey, I can't log into the like I can't log into the virtual far uh, machine farm or anything like that, or I don't understand the question that like, that's undergrad level stuff that's not happening here so it's very much uh like a job like a professional relationship and if you have questions there's engagement you get le depth of level of knowledge um it is a small program so i mean there's been multiple times where i've facetimed faculty or phone called faculty to get uh real quick answers on really specific things to help me advance through a lab or through a homework assignment or what have you now so that's the faculty piece of it on the student to student um I mentioned there is a Slack channel. I was in a cohort uh, with like 10 to 12 different students. Like I have incredibly good relationships with many of them. Even to this day, I graduated, you know, almost a year ago. And 
Uh, the relationships I developed really good. I mean, you do go through some struggles uh, in the coursework and you're kind of bouncing ideas off each other and you know, what do you think of this? Did you look here, etc. So that's been very good and it helps, it helps, you know, stand you up a bit. It really becomes absolutely critical in the dissertation piece. Um, if you haven't watched that PhD truths video I did um, that I linked to earlier, um, give it a listen because the dissertation is incredibly emotionally uh, burdensome and trying and having other students, uh, regardless of them being physically with you, who are going through the same exact program that you are and the same exact struggles that you're feeling, um, really provides that um, soundboard for you to kind of release some stress and get some perspective and understand what's going on. So I can't emphasize enough how strong and how quality the student to student um, you know, engagement was within the PhD program at Dakota State University. It was like awesome. Now some of the costs uh, that you need to be aware of. Uh, I kind of hinted earlier about the uh, labs in 848 taking a long amount of time and the dissertation being incredibly demanding. PhDs aren't for everyone, okay? I'm just gonna put it out there. The PhD at Dakota State University in cyber operations is very technical. If you do not have a, at least an undergrad, if not a master's in computer science, I, I, I'm not sure how good you're gonna do, right? So like, you know, there are naturally gifted people who don't have any formal education, but given the depth of um, technical nuance that the program gets into and the, the ability to understand hardware architecture, and when you're reversing embedded systems and, and these type of things, um, just having a foundational computer science understanding, I think it's not just computer science, other disciplines could be good, but they have to be somewhat related, like computer engineering, computer architecture, electrical engineering, uh, these type of disciplines. This is a multi-year program, three, four, five, six years worth of your time and investment. And some of the coursework, you can kind of manage it well, but I, you know, courses like 848 are going to be incredibly demanding and require you to make sacrifices in other parts of your life. So be aware of that. Also with the dissertation, uh, you could take as long or as short amount of time as you want, but the longer you take, the older and staler your research is getting and the more likely you are not to complete it. So making those big time sacrifices are absolutely um, paramount. So my recommendations for you going forward, I'll link in the show notes below, but check out the actual courses and what the descriptions are for the Dakota State University PhD in Cyber Operations program. Do not get it confused with the PhD in Cyber Defense, which is a completely different program than the Cyber Operations one uh, for various reasons, and you'll be able to see uh, by the course descriptions and such. Um, you know, if you don't have that deep technical background, I think you will have a challenge uh, completing the program successfully. If you have a tough time uh, with commitment and you're quite a procrastinator, you could have a challenge with the program. What I will say is I've gone through it. I am very happy I went through it. I would never do it again. Uh, there, there's a reason why people have one PhD. It's incredibly demanding and incredibly um, trying uh, on you uh, to be able to complete that. Some of the relationships I've made in the program will, will persist uh, throughout my life. I know about it. I'm going to a wedding of one of the people who I went through the program with uh, this summer, so congratulations to him. Um, so just uh, weigh it, but it, it, it's an excellent program. I, I do wanna point out I'm not paid or an affiliate or uh, endorsed whatever by Dakota State to make any of these claims in this video. Uh, this is my own personal perspective and how I truly feel. So it's been really fun today talking about uh, the PhD program at Dakota State University. Uh, I hope it answered some questions that you might have. Uh, if you have any other questions, please comment below and I'll be happy to answer them and engage with you back and forth. So until next time, stay secure.